at Woolridge High School is our new athletic director, Ron Jacobson. And Ron's with us. Ron, would you stand, please? Ron, who you may not know, is his wife, Sue, who is sitting directly across the table from him, and we want to welcome Ron and Sue. She is standing. No. <laughs> and thank him for his support of the wrestling program throughout this year. Also, I don't see John and Jeannie Baduri here, but John was our bus driver all year, and I think took the boys on every trip that we had did his usual competent and efficient job, and not only was a bus driver, but a loyal and dedicated fan supporter throughout the season. So when you see John and Jeannie Baduri, thank them on behalf of all of us as wrestling fans and wrestling parents, because I think John goes out of his way to do a good job, to take care of our sons and daughters when they're on those trips, kind of above and beyond the call of duty. So John and Jeannie Baduri, we want to thank you. Another special individual who's here tonight, and as usual, has an appendage uh, that may seem unnatural to some of us, but seems natural to him, and that's H.A. Borchers, who has his traditional camera and is sitting here. Borch travels with us most of the time, does a lot of photography for the team, is responsible for most of the photographs that you see in the Mobridge Tribune of wrestling fans and wrestling events, so Borch, on behalf of wrestling fans, thanks to you and thanks to Pat for following the team and for your support of the team all year long. And then the KOLY Wrestling Reports, which have been a tradition, ongoing tradition over the ca over the course of the last several years. Started initially, I think, by John Salsiedler reporting competently and efficiently for KLY Sports, and continued uh, this year. And certain individuals make those wrestling reports possible. And KLY is a business, of course, like all of us are engaged in, so they need sponsors. And without the support of those sponsors. KOLY wrestling coverage would not be possible. And we had radio coverage of every wrestling event this year. We had radio coverage of the conference tournament, the district tournament, the regional tournament, and about 16 to 18 reports during the state tournament. And without those sponsors, those wrestling reports would not be possible. And it's not only that they support wrestling, but they contribute financially to support wrestling by paying for those wrestling spots. So their support throughout the year is crucial, and crucial to, I think, good quality coverage by KOLY Sports of wrestling. Dr. David Nordstrom and Nordstrom Dental Clinic sponsored the wrestling reports throughout the year. And when you see Dr. Nordstrom, thank him. It was his financial support and his financial contributions that made those reports during the season possible. So give him your thanks, give him your business, and on behalf of wrestling, and if you want to see those continue, uh, express your appreciation to him and also to KOY Sports. During the tournaments, Dr. David Nordstrom was joined by other sponsors, and we're fortunate to have one of them, at least one of them, here uh, this evening, and that's Brad Schilling. Claude Ziegler and Brad Schilling, on behalf of Ziegler Schilling Agency, contributed and sponsored some of the reports that you heard during the tournament, and especially during the state tournament. So, Brad, we want to thank you. You've been a good supporter of wrestling over the years, and I know you'll continue to do that in the future because you've got some young wrestlers coming up that we're looking forward to. But as a sponsor and as a financial supporter of wrestling, we want to thank you for your efforts. So, Brad. <laughs> the other sponsors, and I don't see any of them here, uh, of the tournaments that have done it over the years and also did it again this year were Gibson's Discount Center, Bosch Oil Company, John and Shirley Liebelt, and I've mentioned Dr. David Nordstrom and Claude Ziegler and Brad Schilling on behalf of Schilling Agency. So again, they make those reports possible and without their financial support they wouldn't be possible. So give them your thanks, give them your business, and uh, they would appreciate your patronage. 
So with that, I want to introduce Coach Jerry Apple. Coach Apple is in his second year here at Mobridge as a quality teacher within Mobridge High School and also as the head wrestling coach. Over the course of the last two seasons, Coach Apple, among his many accomplishments, has two district championships, two regional championships, a conference championship this year, third in the state last year with 89 points, fifth in the state this year with 87 points. So, Jerry, on behalf of all wrestling supporters, we thank you for your efforts, and I, we'd like you to come forward and say a few words at this time. Coach Apple. that he made, certainly thanking the uh, radio sponsors, uh, Howard Cosell here, and <laughs> Don Meredith probably back there. And I know a couple of different times we uh, listened to a few of the radio reports too, I think the Sully Buttes one, uh, we listened to him making that on the, right on the telephone, I think live, we were out in the lobby, in fact some of us were making more noise than we should have been. And we also listened to it on the bus on the way home. He certainly knows how to color up those reports. So if you did miss them, just use your imagination. And it gives you a pretty good idea of how things come out. During the course of the year, I certainly would like to thank you parents for the support. You drive a lot of miles, you do a lot of washing, you put up a lot of, move a lot of, I guess we probably call them, what, gruff, sometimes ornery, dieters at home. I know how it's been for those guys. I've done it myself, and my old mother gave me the same type of comments. She was always glad when wrestling was done that I quit my crying and complaining. So I'm sure a big thank you to you parents for putting up with this type of thing. And uh, like I always tell them, you just have to kind of grin and bear it. But uh, I certainly appreciate uh, the efforts that you people have made. This year's team. I'd like to uh, introduce the team members, and we'll talk a little bit about the uh, season. Our JV this year, I guess I'm going to go in order rather than classes because it's a little bit easier for me to remember that way. Uh, Darwin Monroe, freshman. John Curran, a freshman. Pat Besnick wrestled uh, quite a bit in the JV, and he's an eighth grader. Uh, Mike Hardinger, a senior. Andy Hartford, a freshman. Corey Binger wrestled a little bit, and his uh, back injury that he sustained a year ago flared up again, and that's uh, pretty well sidelined Corey. Brent Fenrick, a junior, <coughs> Alan, Alan Flush, a freshman, John Badgley, a freshman, Dondi Frazier, a junior, and my son Nick, a seventh grader, kind of subbed a couple of matches for Sean when he was sick, and he was kind of shaking in his boots. Kind of too bad we had to throw him to the wolves right away, but I was really proud of the fact that he uh, was able to at least make it out there in the match. It took quite a bit of courage on his part. JD people, uh, I would like to congratulate you guys on a fine year. A couple of highlights that these people had. Uh, we took them over to wrestle Lemon against Lemon's Varsity. It was really quite a match. Went right down the wire. We ended up beating Lemon's Varsity guys. And I think the following that following weekend, we wrestled in the Macintosh tournament, and most of the teams there were varsity teams. And correct me now, guys, if I'm wrong. I think finished the fourth was it? Placed five or six kids. So it was really a commendable job, and uh, those are the type of things that we need <coughs> out of our JV people to eventually work themselves up to the varsity spot. I know as time goes on for the JV guys, the season kind of gets long, especially when these varsity guys are beating on them and throwing them around the room. But your efforts are greatly appreciated because without you as sparring partners and opponents in the room, we really need that to improve our varsity people. The JV people, I know at times it seems almost heartless and thankless job that you go through. And I'd certainly like to congratulate you people on all the hard work that you dedicated to put yourself through. So I'd like to give you a hand for that. <laughs> this year's 
varsity. Starting out with 103 pounds, Sean Ford, the freshman. Uh, B.J. Schillingstead was a junior at 112 pounds, 119. Rhett Keller, freshman. Todd Keller, freshman, 125. 130 pounds, Chris Seiler, a senior. 135, Brad Brockle, a junior. Uh, 140, Doug Retzer, a senior. 145, Bill DeWitt, a sophomore. 152, Kelly Chesmore, a senior. 160, Tate Moser, senior. 171, Walt Wonder, a senior. Donnie Walker was at 189 as a junior. And finally, heavyweight Chris Hoff as a sophomore. That pretty much was our varsity lineup most of the year. A little bit earlier in the year, Don D. Frazier had broke into the lineup as a heavyweight. And uh, Chris decided he wanted his job back, which he eventually did win again. And uh, they had a number of struggles, I guess we could say, but he prevailed. He just decided he wanted that spot a little bit worse than Gandhi did, and he was able to hang on to that thing. During the year, um, I guess we really had uh, some accomplishments this year, I think, that were probably more of a surprise than anything. We finished up with a 14-4 and four dual record, and uh, I guess when we started the year out, we went to Watertown, and we had some unknown people in the lineup, first-year varsity wrestlers and so on. And we wrestled Brookings. First match of the year turned out to be the eventual State A champions. And uh, we had those people down 26 to 15 going into the last three weights. And I was really surprised. And uh, then the buzzsaw took over. <laughs> Their last three kids going into the state tournament were all undefeated. So there was no fluke that they ended up pinning us in the last three weights. But I was really proud of them. We turned around the rest of Canby, Minnesota, and uh, Canby beat us also. So we sustained two losses in our first two matches. And from there, we just sort of took <coughs> off, I guess. And uh, got to the East-West Classic, wrestled really well, 4-0. We tied with Aberdeen, but we won on the criteria of having more points, so we ended up with a team trophy. Uh, we turned around the following Tuesday and wrestled Pier, and I think it was a little bit of a downer for us. Uh, Pier did beat us. And we were looking to get back at Pier again right after Christmas, and then a snowstorm stopped us. And uh, looking at that, the following week we were to wrestle Redfield. And so we had not been on the mats for three weeks, and I was really worried, really, what kind of a condition we would be in as far as really being flat. I know sometimes coaches have mentioned that if you don't wrestle for quite a while, it's just like the teams aren't with it. And add to that, of course, that I think it was Saturday morning, I get a call from Sean Ford's dad saying, guess what, your son is sick. Looked like he swallowed something that puffed his cheek way out. Sean ended up in the hospital. And I got to thinking, shoot, I guess we're going to do it to us again. But uh, we kind of rallied the troops and went down there, and uh, we kind of showed Redfield this year who was boss. That thing they won last year was a fluke. There was no fluke this year. These guys wanted to win that pretty bad, and uh, the final outcome really indicated that. As uh, time went on, I think probably one of the highlights of our season was probably the Aberdeen Quadrangular. Beating Aberdeen as bad as we did, 46 to 10, was kind of a shocker, especially when they drilled us last year. And then we turned around and beat Milbank. And uh, that, to me, was really a pleasing note, I think, in our season. These guys really improved as time went on. And uh, that is, of course, the thing that I am always looking for is to get these people to improve, make their performances much better than it has been the week before, and so on, and eventually peaking at the state tournament. We finished out the year then. I guess I should back up here a minute. In uh, December, we won the Central Conference Tournament, not only winning it by about 50 or 60 points, but the thing I enjoyed was fact that we took all 13 guys and everyone came home with a medal. And we also accomplished that same feat at the district tournament. We always have a goal that we want to win the tournament. Everybody wants to win a medal. And everybody wants to win the medal they deserve. Whether or not we all got the ones we deserved, everybody got a medal. And that was kind of the main thing. On to the region, we were able to win that again. And again, it was just like last year's 
battle with Philip was quite a struggle. And uh, again, we just we kind of ran into some problems here and there, and uh, a couple of different times that we maybe just weren't up to par where we should have been. But in the end, things came out right. We ended up beating people that we had lost to before. And that, to me, is certainly shows the quality and caliber and character that these people have, being able to come back. And they were able to do that all year long. And we finally ended up at the state tournament in fifth place. And we were hoping to maybe hit the top four and at least get some sort of a trophy or an award out of the thing. But I can't really say that we had a poor tournament. We went down with only two experienced people. And uh, we the eight that went down, we were able to play six. I wasn't sure we could do that. And again, I told these kids all week long, it doesn't make any difference about records. It doesn't matter where you place in the region. The main thing is get there first. The second thing is just simply go out and take one match at a time. And I guess probably for us, uh, one of the biggest surprises at the state tournament I think was Bill DeWitt. And uh, Bill can probably verify this pretty well thought he could win his first round match, which was very shaky. And I think he was so nervous and so tight. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't sure he was going to pull that one out. Next round, he had the real tough kid from Garrettson, which he didn't win. And then after that, I just told him, hey, you got to win the next one to play. And he went out and got the job done. And the following round, he has a kid, I think it was from Grove. He says, coach, oh, yeah, he's tough. He's so old. Aren't you? Well, yeah, but he says, Scott, I'm nervous. Don't you think he is too? Well, yeah, but. <laughs> and he goes out there, and uh, once he ties up with a guy, and the butterflies leave, and the way he goes. And the next round, and the next round, and so on. And so he ended up winning five out of six matches and placed third. And that's what it takes. You just have to throw caution to the wind, go out, get the job done, and what happens, happens. So that's the same type of attitude. Uh, we really had uh, some good performances down at the state meet. I know we had a couple of disappointments. We were hoping to get a couple of people in the finals. But that didn't stop. They came back, placed, and got high places. That was great. A um, couple of things I'd like to mention here. At the end of the year, last year, I made up a well, kind of a team stat booklet. And all the kids got one, and I made up several others that I gave to um, some of the media people and so on, and keep one up in the library. And my plans are to do this again. And some of the things that we accomplished this year, I'd like to tell you about a few records that we set. Now, we have to keep one thing in mind, of course, we have an extra weight class, 13 as opposed to 12, where some of these other weight classes were set. But at the same time, we also missed two tournaments, so we're talking about possibly at least six matches each one of these guys missed. We didn't get to the pair quad and we didn't get to the lead invitation. We broke a lot of team records without wrestling our full schedule. So that has to say a lot for those guys. The overall individual record for our whole team was 280 wins, 150 losses, and seven ties. We had 126 pins, our opponents only had 26. So we were 100 pins better. One thing we like to stress is be aggressive. And that certainly shows. <coughs> Technical falls also. We had 21, our opponents had seven. So that aggressiveness pays off in big points, team points, and so on. I think one thing, as an example, I mentioned to some of the kids, <coughs> kind of wondering how we beat Phillip when Phillip placed more kids higher at the region. And I went back and we looked at that tournament thing on Sunday. You know, Phillip had four pins the whole tournament. And we had like 12. We actually won that tournament because we were pinners. Not because we placed higher. That's the main thing. That's, that to me is at least the thing I'm striving for. That's the ultimate goal. If they can accomplish those things, I think they've accomplished their jobs. So our records then, we set a um, most season wins, 280 this year. The old record was 259. And that was set in 1984-85 and also again in 1986-87. So we beat that by uh, about 21 wins. <coughs> Takedowns. 
team takedowns. We scored 496 takedowns this year. The old record was 434 from 1986-87. And along with this, I probably should mention our Mr. Takedown over here. Also set an individual record. Broke his own record. Last year he set a record of 82 takedowns. This year, Tate had 98 takedowns. And uh, I know a couple of matches he went out and scored like 10, 11 takedowns. Nick happened to be home that one time at Sully Buttes. I think it was there. Or maybe it was down at the winter tournament or something when he was there. Whatever. He just overheard Tate going out to the match. He says, well, I think I'll practice my takedowns this round. And that just kind of struck him kind of funny. <laughs> but uh, the ability that... Uh, do you remember when you said that? You were going to practice takedowns? Her ears heard you. <laughs> it's fun to watch. Uh, I think our kids this year, we spent a lot of time in practice, especially on takedowns. Another thing we practice a lot on escapes. Wrestlers hate the drill moves. They do it two or three times, then they do it slop, then the coach gets mad and yells. Then we go back and we do it again. And uh, it's boring, it's repetitious. Made to do it, but you have to be able to do that stuff and do it correctly. And I think eventually things kind of paid off for us. Uh, we did tie the school record in escapes, 227. Or excuse me, we broke that. I'm sorry. We had 227. The old record was 222, so we broke another record there. And as far as escapes are concerned, Brett Keller tied Kansas Dubray's record of 30 escapes in a season. So you made the record books but you're sharing it with Kansas. <laughs> uh, last individual, really had quite a year for a senior and a first year varsity. Uh, he wrestled one tournament for us last year. He was a fill-in when Kansas couldn't. Kelly Chesmore, and he ended up with two records. Guess we, where we had Mr. Tate down over here in Mosier, we had Mr. Reversal. Kelly broke the school record of uh, 37 reversals by Ken Jensen in 1980-81. He had 40 reversals this year. And the other thing that he did was he accomplished the quickest pin. The old record was 16 seconds by Kyle Jensen once and B.J. Schillings did twice. And <laughs> too bad, B.J., your name got erased. <laughs> the quickest pin this year was Kelly Chesmore in 14 seconds against John McDaniels at Todd Gunn. So I'll write John a letter. Thank you. <laughs> So that kind of tells you a little bit about the records. Um, just off the beaten track a little bit, I'd just like to share a couple of things with you. <clears throat> During the course of every season, kind of weird things, odd things, funny things happen, and so on. Uh, those of you that are down the state tournament uh, should probably realize yellow isn't the team color. But we had some freshman riding the bus that says, Coach, guess what? What? Forgot my head gear home. Call your parents. They left already. Todd Keller. He ended up with an ear problem, and he had to have a, a different headgear, one that has a, a metal type plate inside to protect the ear. And so we uh, sent Mr. Borchers down to Dakota Sports, and I had a voucher for him, and all I could find was yellow. So that's, we got a new team color, I guess, yellow. I distinctly remember early in the morning on the uh, Saturday that we were going to Aberdeen, Everybody was loaded, packed, ready to go. Kept waiting for this individual, kept waiting. I finally went back in, got on the horn, called up. Her dad answered, I says, is Teresa there? <laughs> gosh, I think she's up. I'll go check, just a minute. He goes back, he says, gosh, guess what? She fell back to sleep. <laughs> he says, now what should I do? I just said over the phone, shoot her. <laughs> We did stop by and pick her up. <laughs> she had about five minutes to shower. She came out with this wet hair. Anyway, she got a lot of guff on that trip. But uh, we kind of always remember a few of these things that happened during the course of the season. I'm not sure she'll never forget it. But... <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Teresa and Jody, uh, Teresa Larson and Jody Redding are two student managers this year. I'd certainly like to thank them for the stats 
taking that they've done uh, a couple different times. We had to split up groups where the JV went one place and the varsity went another, and we sent one one way and one another way. Especially at tournaments, when one is taking stats and there's two matches going on at the same time, it kind of becomes a little bit difficult. But um, I really appreciate all the work they've done. Uh, day in and day out, they're there every day. Set the mats out, come out and scrub them. Uh, it's kind of a thankless job. It's something that needs to be done. But uh, I certainly want to thank them that they've done an outstanding job for me this year. And I'd like to give that up. This time I have uh, letter certificates and letters to give out. When I call your name off, a few people would please come up. Some of the people have already received their letters when they got their jackets. They wanted their letters to uh, put on their jackets, so I already went ahead and uh, gave them their letters. So if they ask again and I tell them no, you know why. All right, first of all, I've got these right in order. Uh, our 103 pounder, Sean Ford. B.J. Schillingstead. One of our dynamic duel, Brett Keller. And I don't know, he always argues that he's the good looking half. <laughs> Brad Brockle, Jr. Bill DeWitt. Johnny Walker. And heavyweight Chris Hoff. Student managers Teresa Larson and Jody Redding. Okay, lastly, I'd like to call up and uh, have these guys come up and just stay here for just a minute. Our five seniors Chris Seiler, Doug Retzer. Kelly Chesmore, Kate Mosier, and Walt Wonder. Would you please come up? <laughs> Last year, it's always hard for me to kind of say goodbye to the seniors. Uh, it makes it a little harder this year because these guys have been with me now for two years instead of just one as some of you guys last year. And I think you'll find these kids are probably bared out too. That I think a wrestling team is so much more close-knit than about any other athletic team. Um, Yeah, we cuss and swear at each other, we get mad sometimes, and bounce each other off the wall, throw head gears, brothers even fight brothers sometimes. <laughs> and at times, if you were in the corner a little mouse, you'd think, what kind of a zoo is this? Somewhere along the line, things always have to come together. And it's usually a group like these people, the seniors. The underclassmen look to them to that leadership. And if somebody's dragging a little bit, you can usually hear Walt <laughs> pushing a little bit. And uh, certainly uh, those kinds of things have to be done sometime. And what more, I guess, would be better to come from a senior rather than maybe a freshman or a sophomore. These guys have been uh, now, I guess, for two years, say, with me. And uh, it's always hard parting company with them. 
me, it's almost like all these guys are kind of like adopted sons, in my case. And uh, I always enjoy seeing uh, alumni people coming back again and uh, sitting down and visiting. Sometimes they come in the room to work out with the guys and so on. I always welcome them. And I hope these guys come back and visit also. Uh, is looking down the row here, just to mention a little bit about each one of these people. I think Kelly and uh, Doug here probably were our two pleasant surprises this year. I didn't know what to really expect. Um, for one thing, I think that the state tournament was an accomplishment itself. They really wanted to go. They really performed well. And uh, as time went on, we didn't know if we had uh, somebody outstanding or a warm body or whatever we had. But things kept on going. They kept on improving. They kept on improving. And that's the thing that really tickles me, to see these people accomplish what they do and always improve from one week to the next and one month to the next, and certainly from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. That, to me, is, I think, really the ultimate goal. And I think they really met their goal. <coughs> Chris, last year, as a little 98-pounder, <laughs> somewhere along the line, I think his mother fed him a little bit. He ballooned up a little. Actually, wrestling a weight class or two above, maybe where he should have been. <coughs> but the size of the man is not what counts, it's what's inside. And there were times when he went up against high place winners, shrugged it off, so what? And out he went after. And I look at, I guess, that Philip Triangle. <coughs> he had the Philip kid who was a runner up the state, and he had to go out and wrestle the wall kid who was a runner up the state. Not very often in a triangle you have to wrestle two caliber of people like that. He gave both those guys all they wanted. And uh, he's really a gutty individual, a person who never gives up and dies. Kind of miss that. Now and then, uh, he's, of course, one of these guys that likes the shenanigans in the practice room and so on, too. But <laughs> I guess that comes with a character, I'm not sure. His last two guys down here, Tate, uh, Certainly has performed very well. In the last three years, he's been a place winner at the state tournament, placed fifth, I think, as a sophomore. Won 145-pound championship last year as a junior. We were hoping he could repeat again. It wasn't possible, but he did come back again and got third. And uh, I think certainly the uh, takedowns and so on are the things I'm always going to remember. Probably the last match, too. I'll probably remember that a lot, too. He gets taken down the headlock, bonked on the head, and he's bobbing and weaving all over the place. I time out, and I go out and check him out. They're ready to start wrestling again. And you know, there are times when coaches maybe sit there on the sidelines, and these guys maybe think we're idiots. I don't know. But I think just because we're all keyed up, you just kind of shout out anything or to encourage them to get going. Of course, I mean, he's a, here's a senior who's wrestled umpteen number of matches should know. And I'm yelling, watch out for the headlock tape. <laughs> he turns over to me and he says, no duh. <laughs> At that point, referees told us after the match, when that happened, he said, we knew he was okay by then. <laughs> <laughs> but again, congratulations on a fine career, Kate. And lastly, Walt, if anybody is probably our uh, busybody, overachiever, and hard worker, certainly Walt fits that description. Um, one of the bigger guys in the team, but in the morning when we come to lift weights and run halls, he's the guy that has the best time in the whole team. And that uh, verifies to me someone who's pushing. He had a goal in mind. Didn't make it to that state tournament last year. He was going to make it there this year. And he was going to place. Top four, wasn't it? So close to being in the finals. So close. But that shouldn't take anything away either. He had really an outstanding year. And I think the thing that really uh, is something that he can hold his head up to is he's really basically a second year varsity wrestler. Started a little bit as a sophomore on the varsity last year. And I'll tell anybody, you aren't going to become a wrestler until at least two years. It's going to take one year to learn the ropes. Second year, then you're finally going to start doing things. And I 
that's exactly what happened to him. So seniors, thank you for a fine season, and I hope you come back and see us again. I just have a couple of other announcements to make. Um, I'm certainly hoping that our basketball team makes it to the state tournament. Should they make it, by the way, fellas, I have mentioned this to a number of you people, this coming Saturday is the AAU Kids District, and I need countless referees, scorers, etc., etc., matchmakers for the cheerleaders and so on. So I remind you again, don't everybody leave me. I need your help. And I would also like some of you guys to also help out. I've had a couple people that have been helping me with the uh, kids and coaching them after school. I do need some help. And lastly, mention too that uh, most of you have turned in your equipment. We still have a few of you that have it. Could please bring that money and get that done. We do give out a couple of awards, uh, which we have not had a chance to get everybody together and vote on. We give an Outstanding Wrestler Award and a Most Improved Wrestler Award. And uh, those will be coming in the future. I will be contacting these people with ballots and so on. So again, I guess that's about the end. I'm going to all I have to say for the program and so on. But once again, I'd like to thank all the kids for their tremendous amount of work that they put in and dedication. Parents, thank you for backing us. Sponsors, everyone connected with making this a successful season. Thank you. Chapel, nice job. There are a couple other individuals associated with Coach Apple that Jerry mentioned to me earlier that couldn't be here tonight, and I know that he wants to extend his thank yous to each of those, and that's, of course, assistant, co assistant coach Jim Lindstrom. He had a death in the family, and he's in Rapid City, so he is not able to be here tonight. But again, we thank Coach Lindstrom for his efforts in working with the students and the wrestlers and the good job that he does. Of course, Terry Binger has been a continual source of uh, joy to those of us in the wrestling program over the years in terms of working with the kids programs and working with the junior high program and the good job that he's done organizing those programs and a former junior high coach of the year, Terry Binger. So again, both of those individuals along with Coach Apple deserve our thanks for a job well done. Oftentimes when the team is successful, it's easy to be patting the wrestlers on the back and, and telling them what a great job they did, but oftentimes when there is adversity, we all turn to the coach and start to blame the coach when things don't go well. So I think it's, it's equally true that they deserve both credit uh, when things are going well, but uh, probably not the blame that's associated with coaching. It's not an easy job to do. They're constantly in the limelight. All of us think we're coaches and smarter than they are because of the fact that we have kids participating on the wrestling team. And so I think each of those deserves a pat on the back and a, job, a thank you for a job well done over the years because it's not an easy job. As the KLY wrestling correspondent this year, I had the opportunity to follow the team and also because of my interest in the program, the fact that I have a son, we get, I think, 16 or 17 or 18 reports at the state tournament and I could not have done it without the able assistance of the previous KLY correspondent who added color and his own unique insights into what was going on, not only from a wrestling perspective, but also just from a character perspective. And we even tried to do one of the matches live, I think it was when Brett went into overtime. Uh, we didn't want to sign off because we ran our 2.30 or 3.30 report, whatever it was, so we tried to do a move by move, blow by blow of Brett's overtime win just to keep it going, and that of course was <laughs> easy. And I had several comments from individuals about the uh, joy and excitement in our voice when Brett ultimately won that. So, John, thank you over the years for your support of the wrestling program, and also thank 
you for helping me at the state tournament. individual results of the wrestling program and the reports that you heard on KLOY were not done by me alone. I had the easy part in the sense that I just had to talk and read oftentimes in terms of what went on. But Jerry mentioned these two young ladies and they deserve my appreciation and I want to publicly thank them and that's Jody Redding and Teresa Larson. Without their help in keeping the statistics and keeping the book I wouldn't have known the cows from the cowboys or the wrestlers from the mat because they kept everything. They got it down on the in the record book in terms of what happened. And so Jody and Teresa, never once was there anything wrong. Thank you for your help all season long. I appreciate it. The uh, <coughs> one of the individuals said to me, well, "What do you talk about on the radio?" And and I. It was one of those instances where I was never at a loss for words, and I think that's because of my feeling about each of the young men that I always reported on, and it wasn't easy to find good things to say about each of those individuals that wrestled each time, and just like Jerry had memories of his coaching with these individuals, I'll always have memories of the wrestling matches that I followed and watched over the years and the way that we reported on the radio. Remember the match that Sean couldn't go to? That didn't make any difference. His mom was there with the family rooting the wrestlers on in Redfield over Icy Roads. Before we signed off on the radio, we wished Sean the best of luck and thought about him back in bed in Mowbray. So special moments like that. And, and with Brett and Todd, it seemed that when one would excel and Todd would be on the sideline not to be outdone, he'd go out and even work harder just to show that Okay, brother, you can do it, and I'm going to do it, too. And it was a joy watching those two young men compete all year long. And those three freshmen uh, you know, are going to win a lot of matches for the Mowbray Varsity. And it was fun watching each of them and the success that they enjoyed this year. And then Chris Hoff and Bill DeWitt as sophomores. We always joke about the flying headlock out of the locker room that Bill <laughs> had this year. And it was inevitable that when we got him in the... When he got him in the headlock, we would just cheer and, and uh, because we knew the headlock was coming and we shared, I think, Bill's joy in putting the headlock on and keeping on and grinding it into the mat. And, uh, so Bill brought a special uniqueness to the program and we were happy to watch him. Same with Chris Haw. Chris Haw, I think, oftentimes is probably in the most difficult position on the wrestling team. I was always thankful that uh, the son that I had that wrestled so far wrestled in the early weights because if it comes down in a close match and it was always fell on Chris's shoulders oftentimes and that was a difficult position for Chris to be in as a sophomore and he handled it and handled it well and he handled it with good spirits and he had a good, a good successful career he kept coming back a lot of determination so it was always fun to report Chris's accomplishments and then the juniors BJ and Brad have been around for a number of years wrestling and BJ at 112, we joked that this was his year and it was a seventh place finish in the state tournament. And watching BJ work and wrestle and the hard work that he's put in and watching him since an eighth grader uh, has brought us all a lot of joy. And the same with Brad. Brad is able to contort his body around into more different <laughs> positions than anybody I've ever seen. And watching him this year, you'd be surprised the way he can bend his arms and legs around and just wrap his body around opponents in a way that I don't think anybody else can. <laughs> so, and, and Donnie Walker they never lost heart and kept working. And, and it's awfully, awfully tough to wrestle at the heavier weights when you're giving up 15 or 20 pounds. But Donnie was undaunted and kept coming back and wrestled well all the time and gave it a full six minutes and hung in there against a lot heavier and oftentimes a lot tougher kids. So those three juniors brought a special joy and we're going to be happy that they're going to be back next year again winning more matches for the Mobridge Tigers. And then the seniors, I guess Doug and Kelly, I always really enjoyed reporting what they did and the success that they enjoyed this year because of the outstanding job that they did. I know if I had to vote on most improved that uh, Doug and Kelly would be in my book because of the fact that they just kind of coming back and I think showed more heart and, and more determination than a lot of individuals. 
that have been involved in the wrestling program. And each of them, from the start to the finish, never gave up. And I think that that's exemplified by the fact that Kelly has reversal, the reversal record. When he'd get in a predicament, he just didn't lay on his back and forget about it. He just kept moving. And, and with 40 reversals, he never gave up and wrestled a full six minutes. And that's the same that he does in terms of the special job that he did. Uh, Chris, uh, I've already told him how I feel about uh, what he did. And it's sufficient to say that I'm proud of him. And Tate, I think we all share Tate's accomplishments the last three years. Uh, Tate has had as much success in the wrestling program as anybody has had. And it was always fun watching Tate and the way that he approached his matches and 11 takedowns in one match at Sully Dukes and the talent that he showed and the success that he's had in the, in the program over the years. And I often said uh, when I was reporting about Walt on the radio that I didn't think there was anybody on the team that showed more determination oftentimes in powering out of impossible situations than Walt Wonder. And once he made up his mind he was going to do something or get out of a situation, there wasn't anything that was going to stand in his way. And that when Walt wanted to do it, it got done. So I want to thank each of the boys for the good job that they've done over the years. And I know I speak for all parents in saying uh, bring a special kind of pride to us as parents in the job that you do. I also want to introduce eight young ladies that have traveled with the team over the years and who I am also had the privilege of, of watching this year, the junior varsity cheerleaders, when we had <coughs> the joint varsity junior varsity matches, I got to see and I got to know those young ladies and they're fine young women and I know their parents are as proud of them and the enthusiasm that they brought to the team as the wrestling parents are of the wrestlers. <clears throat> so if the junior varsity cheerleaders are here, that they'd stand up. It's Jody Berg. Jody, are you here? You're here. I saw you earlier. Jody Berg, Jamie Lamp, <coughs> Rochelle Singer, and Darcy Hofschild. Darcy here. Thank you, young ladies. I guess uh, Jody and Jamie. saw this year and the different cheerleaders that were associated with those teams, but wherever we went and I watched our cheerleaders as compared to any of the other cheerleaders, I was awfully proud of the four young women that traveled with us and attended our wrestling matches and the job that they did. And I think they deserve a lot of credit also. Amy Martin is here. <coughs> Amy, uh, Leslie Heil, Tabby Malk, and Stacy Keller. special treat plan so right now wrestlers are you paying attention <laughs> hey, are you paying attention okay contact your parents they have a piece of clothing or wearing apparel that you have to put on and then we want you to go put that on and come back out there. So. <laughs> okay go find them and put them on all varsity wrestlers go find your wearing apparel and put it on all of you the one who the three mentioned here in the back there, the rest given from your parents. <laughs>
Yeah, Ford and them shoes, you know. No, I like that side. I like Ford and them shoes. I like Bill Short. I like Bill The cheesiest legs. Kelly, there you are. Come here, come here. sacrifices that aren't often talked about um, and they make the long trips and they have the hard work and sometimes during the matches they have the most difficult job because they're trying to pay attention to two or three different matches as far as Teresa and Jody are concerned and Amy and Leslie and Tabby and Stacy just having them around all year has been a joy a lot of enthusiasm a lot of spirit as was evidenced by what they did here so those six girls, I think, deserve a lot of credit and our big thanks from all of us wrestling parents and fans for the job they've done all year. Thanks, mm -hmm. girls.
nice moments at the state tournament was uh, what's developing into an annual presentation by the South Dakota wrestling coaches, and that's they elect certain individuals every year to be inducted into the South Dakota Wrestling Hall of Fame. And I think that we're fortunate in Mobridge because it shows the, the kind of program and the kind of the quality of program that we've had here in Mobridge over the years. <clears throat> Last year, Bert Dent was inducted into the Hall of Fame, and this year, Bill and Jim Scher were inducted into the Hall of Fame. I know when John and I were talking on the radio, we were talking about, as they read the long list of accomplishments of Bill and Jim, that we all in Mulberry shared a special pride and a special sense of sharing as we thought about Bill and Jim and the fact that they still call Mulberry home, not only because of their wrestling accomplishments, which have been many uh, over the years, but also because of the kind of good young men that, that those two individuals are. And uh, Frank and Jan are here, and, and Frank and Jan, thank you for, I guess, sharing the boys with us over the years, and congratulations to each of you in terms of having sons that make us all proud. So thank you. As I indicated, this is the second year in a row that we've been doing this. They did it occasionally in the past, but I think it's a nice tradition that's been started as we've done it for the second year. It's a nice way to say thank you and to have some fun and to share with parents after the season is over. And so I think the mothers of the varsity wrestlers that put this together and contributed the cakes and who came down and decorated all deserve a special thank you and a special thanks to Arla Wayne and, and to Peg and to Sandy who kind of conceptualized the idea this year and were the leaders in terms of organizing it. So Arla Wayne, Peg, Sandy, and all the mothers, thanks for giving us the opportunity to get together tonight. I think as wrestling parents, uh, we all share a certain sense of indecision, maybe a sense of frustration, maybe a sense of seeing your little boys and girls uh, out there alone on the mat. You feel like they're, they're out there naked and there are certain rules as far as sending your sons out onto the mat. And some of those are that the, the other kid is always bigger and tougher, and looks about three times bigger than your son is. But I know wrestlers as parents that we don't always say it, but we, we share, uh, I guess, your accomplishments, and we want you to win not for winning's sake alone, but because we love you and because of the fine young men we are, and we want you to be successful and have the joy of being successful in life. We appreciate the sacrifices that you make on behalf of the school and on behalf of parents and grandparents, the hard work. Uh, pain sometimes on the mat, the dieting, we know it's not easy. Sometimes the hardest thing is not going out there and throwing our arms around you and, and comforting you, although we want to do that oftentimes. We share your disappointment sometimes and your frustration and pain, and the hardest thing might be staying away. Some individual a lot more wiser than I once said that our most precious jewels are not made of stone, but are made of flesh. And I think you, as our most precious jewels, uh, are here tonight, and each of us uh, as parents want to thank you for giving us a lot of joy and happiness all season long, and we're proud of each and every one of you. So thank you. Enjoy the cake, which has already started. We're going to have uh, some treats, and uh, you can change back into your regular clothes. So Arla Wayne, uh, I funnel back there and get some pop and cookies, and stick around and socialize. Thanks for coming tonight, each and every one of you.